Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be exploring the animated text block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. Right now, we're looking at a page that has several examples of how you can use and style this block. They are here to give you an idea of what this block can do and how you can use it on your pages and potentially combine it with other page elements such as background colors, images, buttons, and more. As you can see, this block helps you display your text content with all the usual style and typography settings in combination with animated effects. And in this video, we'll be examining the options you get for customizing and styling both the text and the animations that you'd use with it. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Head over to the back end. You're going to need a page to work in. I prepared this one. And now I just need to add my block to it. You can add a block to the page by clicking here. It opens the block selection. You can search for the block you want. Or you can scroll through your entire block selection to find what you need. You'll have your Gutenberg blocks here, as well as anything else you may have installed, such as key blocks. You can tell the key blocks apart by their reddish pink icons. The top section shows the premium key blocks and the bottom has the free ones. So, once you find your block here, simply drag it over to the page. However, there is another way to add blocks. I'll close this so it doesn't distract us. And the second way to add blocks to the page includes clicking on this black plus sign button. Then we'll get a view of a handful of blocks we used recently and the search bar. Start typing the block's name to find it, and there. When it appears, simply click on it to select, and it will automatically be added to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default. To customize it, we'll start from the Content tab. And the first option here is for replacing the dummy text. Simply type over this to enter your content. OK. Once you've entered your text, you can choose its appear animation. This is a set of options that we can use to set how the animation will appear. So, to start with, we can choose if we want to split the title. By default, it's not split in any way, but if we want to, we can split it by word. So, the words from the text will appear one by one. Or we can split the text by letter, which will have the content appearing one letter at a time. For my plan design, I'll go back to using none. Then we have the Appear Animation option. It lets us choose if the title will appear from the bottom, from the top, from the left, or from the right, or if it will fade into view. I'll set mine to appear from the right. After that, we have the Appear Delay option. We can use this to delay the appearance of the animation. So when our visitors are scrolling, this gives them time to reach the section with the animation and see it happen. The settings here are default, which means no delay. Then there's random, which will give you a randomized number of milliseconds as the appear delay. And since it's random, each time you set it, it could be different. Finally, we can also set a specific number of milliseconds. The default value here is 100 milliseconds, and if I replace that with 1000 milliseconds, the animation has a bit more of a delay. I can halve that and set 500, and then the text will appear a bit faster. Alright, I'll go back to using 100 milliseconds for the value. Underneath this, we have the advanced section. It contains only one option, the additional CSS classes. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. And that's it for the Content tab. The next one we have is the Style tab. The first option we have here is the Alignment. So, we can keep our text on the left, move it to the right, or put it in the center, which is what I'll do. After that, we can pick the Title tag. It can be anything from h1 to h6, or even the p tag. I'll stick with h2, it works for my design. Next, we can change the title color. You have this easy to use color picker, so you can set your color by using the slider or by inputting a specific hex, RGB, or HSL code. Alright, following that, we have the title typography settings. They contain options such as the font family. 
which you can choose from the hundreds of available fonts. Then we have the font size, where we can change the size of the title text. I'll put 70 pixels for mine. There. And then there's the weight option, which can turn our title light or bold, or anything you like. I'm going to use the normal 400 setting for mine. Then we have the text transform option that we can use to make our title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or keep it normal, which is the same as the default. And using style, we can make the text italic, for example. With the decoration option, we can add a line under, over or through the text. And to round out the typography options, we have the line height and letter spacing, in case we want to make any spacing adjustments to the text. Alright, that's it for the typography options. Under that, we have the title padding option. It allows us to adjust the space around our text. Let me show you. If I set 50 pixels for the top padding, the additional space has pushed my text downward. And you can do the same for another side, or for all sides of the text. Additionally, you can use this option to force your text to fall into multiple lines. Let me show you. If I switch to percentages and set 30 for the right side and 30 for the left, there. The space I added to the sides has made the room left over for the text narrower, which made it split into two lines. Alright, let me clear this. One moment. Okay, and that's it. We covered all the animated text block options. Granted, there is one tab left, advanced. This is something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and the options here serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. For example, we have responsiveness and motion effect settings here. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the animated text block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. Which brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully, you found this overview of the animated text block helpful. And now, since you've seen how easy it is to use, we hope you'll be trying this block out yourself shortly. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching!